The Entrepreneur's Library, Episode 14. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Before we get started, I want to preface that the audio quality on this one was not uh, the absolute best, but for those that were looking um, to get information on this book, I wanted to I wanted to publish it anyway so that you guys could listen in. So here's Andre. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Andre Sedneve, author of The Business Idea Factory. Welcome, Andre, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Hi, Wade. Nice to meet you. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Andre, and um, uh, originally uh, I started my career as a networking engineer at Cisco Systems. So I have my MBA degree from University of Michigan Ross School of Business, and then I worked uh, as a product manager uh, uh, also for, uh, for a couple of years at Cisco Systems headquarters in the Silicon Valley. I'm right now an entrepreneur and author of five, five uh, self-development books. One of them is uh, The Business Idea Factory. And um, uh, right now I live in uh, Tennessee. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing that. Now let's jump right into your book, The Business Idea Factory, which was just made available for purchase on November 5th of 2013. Andre, we're going to move quickly, but here are some of the top questions our listeners would love to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing the Business Idea Factory? Uh, so uh, I personally am absolutely convinced uh, that uh, coming up with ideas is absolutely essential for business. And it's not just coming up with your business idea. A true entrepreneur is solving like dozens of problems every day, and you need a lot of excellent ideas to make your business successful. And being able to create great ideas is a very essential skill, which I tried to develop myself uh, in myself for over a dozen of years. And the problem I faced after having attended a lot of training, a lot of uh, books about entrepreneurship is that this topic is, isn't very well covered. So firstly, uh, there are no books at all, and I can say that straight uh, about uh, creating business ideas. Uh, most books about entrepreneurship, you can find just one or two pages about it, which say just uh, do something you like, find a need, find a need and meet it, and meet this need. So I couldn't find something uh, about creating business ideas at all. And uh, in the area of creativity, in general, of uh, like how to come up with ideas in general, I found some information, but um, it was a lot of it wasn't practical. And uh, about a lot of it wasn't relevant for coming up uh, with business ideas at all. And I really wanted to create some uh, some source for a person who could uh, who wants to become the best uh, he can or she can in the area of creating business ideas. And uh, I did extensive research, a lot of testing, and came up with a system. I would call this book a system which uh, includes all the techniques and stages of creating business ideas. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that for, for myself, at least personally, um, I know enough about creating business ideas to do that more effectively than 95% of other people. And uh, my readers, hopefully, uh, and many of them say so, um, say that after reading it, they become much more effective and generating business ideas. So Andre, you, you basically already covered the second question, which was, you know, what are some differentiators uh, between your book and others? So I think we'll just, we'll move right on to number three, which is my favorite question. And, and let's move into the deep dive of your actual book. If you can really take us through, uh, give the reader and, you know, our listener uh, a great idea of what your book's all about. Okay. Okay. So I think the best thing I can give uh, uh, to people who are li listening to this podcast, I will give them several samples or, of ideas uh, so that they can apply them right away. And um, then we'll give one technique in the end as well. So what is, uh, if you will think about generating ideas, what it is, uh, what happens when you create a business idea? 
So basically, uh, you need, in order to create a great idea, you need several things. The first thing, which is really important, it is raw materials. The ideas don't come from a thin air. That's why, uh, basically, when you create a great idea, no matter how creative it is, you, you combine several already existing ideas, or you merge them, or uh, they are combined in some way, some aspect from one idea, some aspect from another idea, or, that, or it could be even three or four different ideas. And then something you create from it is creative, innovative, new idea. That's why a person who has more uh, personal experiences in different areas of life is much more likely to come up with a great idea or many great ideas than a person who has very little uh, personal experiences. So, for example, if you're trying to read nonfiction books from different areas, you're meeting a lot of different people, you're traveling, you're trying different hobbies, um, you're going to the conferences, you're experimenting in your life, trying things that you have never done before, you are accumulating much more uh, personal experiences from which you will be later creating ideas from. And you will be much more creative than uh, people who don't have a set of raw materials. So first thing for ideas are raw materials. That's, that's, uh, that's the first thing. The second thing I would say really important for generating ideas is programming your mind. Programming your mind basically is a fancy word for just thinking. I'll just give you an example of what I mean. In majority of companies, uh, in many companies, people think, hey, we need a new idea, need a new product. Let's meet uh, once a year for three, for, for three hours, 15 people in a room. Let's do brainstorming, write all ideas uh, on the blackboard, pick the best one, and uh, this will be an idea for our business. But in real world, it does. Uh, in real in real life, this approach doesn't give. Uh, good results because in order to create a good idea uh, people need time and people need a lot of ideas that's why uh, if, if you're the difference between a person who has hundreds of great ideas and the person who doesn't doesn't generate good ideas at all is asking yourself questions if you give your brain a task every day you ask yourself hey i need this idea i need a good title for my book and next day, I need a good title for my book. Please think about it. Or uh, how can I beat a competition? How can I cut costs on my product? If you ask yourself questions, you program your brain to work. And it thinks and it thinks in the background while you are not thinking about the problem. So the program of the mind basically works like this. You are thinking about the question you need answers for, for just two, three, five minutes. And that's a moment when your brain gets a task. The brain understands, I need to think about that idea. Then you go to your everyday life, work on other, on other tasks, go on vacation or whatever. And then at the moment when you expect this the least, uh, right ideas will pop up in your mind. And in order to keep your brain constantly operational, not waste and to, to not let it waste time, you need to reprogram it periodically so if you just think a um, couple of times per day for five minutes about your problem your brain will be actually thinking about the problem 24 by 7. the best time for programming your brain is before you go to sleep because uh, a lot of research has shown that um, while while we sleep our conscious brain isn't active and our subconscious brain which is responsible for creativity is very very active and during the time we sleep the creative brain works really really well and if you it, it, the last thing you do before you go to bed you think about uh, your problem or a task then you can be sure the next morning or the next day you will get some great ideas so the first thing we covered was we need raw materials to build ideas from Second thing is we need to ask regularly ourselves questions to not keep our brain idle. Our brain is the most powerful computer in the world. However, it, it is idle. It doesn't think about ideas. It doesn't do anything unless we ask it questions. And to, in order to keep it busy, we need to ask ourselves questions regularly. Third thing probably, which I would say is incredibly important to understand for generating ideas, is uh, the formula which says 
quality, quantity equals quality. In creativity, it wor works only this way. Quantity generates quality. It's impossible, absolutely impossible, to come up with one excellent idea. And uh, this is what the biggest problem most people do. They think, hey, I, I'm, I want to start my own business and I need one successful idea. I need just generate one really brilliant idea and I will start doing this business. And it never happens this way. It never happens. Even for the most successful people in the world, like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, they had a lot of unsuccessful ideas before they started a really successful business. The same happens for most creative scientists like Einstein or uh, Edison or others. Majority of ideas they have, the most smart and creative people in the world, majority, uh, majority of people they have, they are bad. They're not, they're low quality ideas. But few, perhaps, or a couple of out of hundreds, are brilliant and those ideas make those people incredibly successful so i would say in general uh, you need always to aim for qu for quantity because our our um, I, I will just explain this way our conscious brain uh, can evaluate ideas but our subconscious brain other part which is creative one it can only generate ideas it can't evaluate them however if you're uh, judgmental and when you're generating ideas you're evaluating them and thinking, hey, this one is good, this one is bad. You're blocking your subconscious brain and it doesn't work. So in order to generate great ideas, you need to uh, put aside your judge, 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 judgments and generate all kinds of ideas, but to really aim only just for quantity. This could be stupid ideas, uh, valueless ideas, but you need to, the only thing uh, while you are creative, you need to aim for is quantity. You need to make as many ideas as possible, and you shouldn't care about their quality. It could be t hundreds of ideas, ten, uh, dozens of ideas, hundreds of ideas, as many as you can generate, and it's better to generate them over some prolonged period of time, perhaps several days. And once you have a lot of ideas on your paper, for example, you want to start a little business, a small business, you have 100 ideas, the only once you have all the ideas written, this is the time when you can really evaluate them. So basically, what happens out of 100 ideas, you could probably right away evaluate and understand that eight of eight ideas are absolutely, absolutely valueless. You don't need them, and you have 20 left, right? Then you go to your creative body partner, whoever the, the other person who you trust. It could be your spouse, a business partner, or somebody else. You share your 20 ideas with him or her. He or she will tell you, hey, I see this problem with this idea. Maybe this is not a good idea. Uh, and then you take into account those suggestions, and you could probably uh, write off another 10 or 15 ideas. And then once you have three or four or five ideas left, this is a time when nobody ever in the world will be able to tell you uh, which one of them will be successful unless you test them in the real world. So you take those three or five ideas and you implement them. And the chances are that three or four out of five of these ideas will fail. And you need to, <laughs> you need to make them fail early so that you don't waste a lot of time, money, and resources. And when they fail, the one that is left, this will be an idea that can make you a millionaire or a famous scientist or that can bring you a lot of, a lot of good things in, in life. So let's, uh, let's summarize what we have covered. The ideas are built from raw materials. Raw materials are experience and information you know about the world. Second thing, you need to ask yourself constantly questions to make your brain think. The third thing, you need to aim for quantity because in creativity, quantity equals quality. And in order to generate one brilliant idea, you need a lot of mediocre or average ideas. The fourth thing which I'll probably cover as we have some more time is uh, I think it's extremely important. It's writing ideas down. You should absolutely get into the habit of writing all your ideas down, even bad ones. And uh, if you will ask me personally what I do, I have a lot of different files. Right? 
for the for the beginning you can have just open one uh, uh, file on your computer or have just one notebook and write all ideas about all aspects of your life in this book or your business uh, once you get more uh, uh, once you you will have uh, more experience doing that you'll probably end up doing something what I do I have a lot of files on my computer relevant to everything I do I have a file for each book where, where I write ideas for each of the books I have idea uh, a file for each of my businesses I have a file uh, with ideas for my personal life and many different different files with ideas and I'll explain you why it's so important and I'm sure some of you won't, won't do that because Unless you really try it, it's difficult to, to believe that writing ideas is that powerful. So first thing is write ideas, you won't be losing ideas. Because uh, the average lifespan of, idea, of the idea is probably one and a half minutes or maximum two minutes. And if you're driving in a car, you think, hey, I'm, I've got a good idea, but I will write it down once I'll come home or at some time later. You, there's a high probability that you will forget it and this idea will never ever come to your head again. And it happens really often. In a situations when you're in a shower or you're already fallen asleep this, uh, or you're uh, sitting in a boring meeting and you think that it's not a very comfortable situation to write down an idea, actually these are the situations when you're really, really creative. And a lot of great ideas, and when it's not conf it's not convenient to write it down. Uh, however, if you, if you are in a shower, just get out of the shower, write it down. If you're falling asleep, what I do, it's very very uncomfortable, but just stand up and go, turn on the light, write it down. Uh, wherever, if I'm jogging outside, if I'm jogging outside, I can keep in my mind three ideas. I'm just repeating them over and over to myself again. Do visual associations and if I, if I have more than three ideas I really stop jogging and go home because <laughs> I value those ideas and uh, don't want them to be forgotten. The second thing is uh, when you write down your ideas you send your brain a signal. Hey buddy, I, ideas are really important for me. Thank you for the job you have done. And this signal let, makes your brain uh, generate the ideas even better. Uh, it really works. Once you write the ideas, your subconscious realizes that what it does for you is valuable and it begins to think even more effectively. And the third benefit of writing ideas is actually generating even further ideas because once you see, see your ideas on paper, you combine them in your mind and out of all these raw materials, even newer ideas can arise, can be born. And I will probably end this thing with a technique I want you to leave you with, which is called $100 technique. Uh, it's one of the, my favorite techniques for generating business ideas. And uh, I'm sure if you, you will use it, you will have a lot of great business ideas for your, uh, for your business. It's called $100 business idea, uh, $100, $100 hour, sorry, $100 hour. Which means you take take an hour and you think about uh, how you can generate extra one hundred dollars. Even if you're working in a big big company, you're already dramatic, uh, very successful. Just think how you can make extra hundred dollars, or how your business can generate extra one hundred dollars. Once you have a lot of the generated many ideas, as I said, you need many ideas. You pick a couple that you think uh, are looking. Uh, most promising and you do implement them if you really manage to generate extra hundred dollars think how you can replicate this success how you can delegate some of the tasks and how you can make uh, more out of uh, uh, this idea and very often this hundred dollars <laughs> ideas hundred dollars hours turn into million dollar businesses or really hu huge business ideas and wh why this techniques work so well is when you're thinking, hey, I just want to be an next Bill Gates, I want to build a billion, billion, uh, billion dollars business, your subconscious kind of is scared, it's, uh, it's, it is blocked, and uh, it's very difficult to generate ideas this way. But once you make the task easy, you say just $100, uh, your subconscious 
generates ideas in a way much more effectively. And often these uh, ideas that can generate at least some money can turn to something bigger. Excellent. So Andre, your book is full of, of content. And, and that's what makes the, the next question somewhat difficult. But if the, if the reader can only take one concept or principle or action item out of your entire book, what would you want that to be? Um, I'd li- uh, I would uh, like it to be the following principle. Uh, ask yourself questions regularly. Uh, in this way, you will generate a lot of ideas. If you don't give your brain a task, it won't generate you any idea. If you, uh, any idea, if you give your task, your brain tasks rarely, it will generate ideas, a few ideas. But if you ask your, yourself questions every day, you will be uh, certainly one of the most creative people in the world because there are few people who give their brain tasks every day, especially creative ones. Excellent. Do you have a favorite quote that you wrote from your book? Um, I will, instead of the quote, uh, I would love to give you a, a following formula, which can be also considered as a quote. In creativity, quote, quantity equals quality. Excellent. Okay. Very good. If there was only one book that you could recommend to our listeners uh, based on how it's influenced your life or created a paradigm shift, what would that be? Hmm. Perhaps uh, one of my f- most favorite uh, books and the one that has influenced my life the most is the book of uh, Richard Branson, Screw It, Let's Do It. Screw It, Let's Do It. Because this this is a person who is extremely creative, has a lot of fun uh, in his life, and has started over 400 successful businesses. Excellent. Andre, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you? Um, to get more information on me, um, you can go uh, look for me on Amazon.com for Andre Sedniev, or you can go to the website www.magicofpublicspeaking.com. Excellent. Very good. Andre, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like to get your hands on the Business Idea Factory or any of the other resources mentioned by Andre, just look at the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.